purpose of Demo Day is to give students the opportunity to share their ideas with an audience outside of their schools and to meet industry professionals. ESA Demo Day is modeled after professional demo days where tech entrepreneurs pitch their inventions to investors. I'm excited to see our innovative students to showcase their projects. Our families don't often have the chance to see our students as inventors the way our MESA teachers, mentors, and staff do. As a result of this, we started Demo Day to engage our families. Today, families will see firsthand the talent and passion of our amazing students. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all that you do for our students and our community. Today's ceremony is a chance to celebrate all of the incredible work you have done all uh, this year. We will begin our celebration with our keynote speaker, Hazel Valdez, Associate Director of the Oregon Bioscience Incubator. After that, we will hear live from one of our student teams who volunteered to present their projects, and then we'll see a recorded pitch, project pitch from another team. We'll end the ceremony with some upcoming events and opportunities Mesa has in store for the rest of this year. To kick things off, I'd like to introduce our interim executive director, Kelly Cousineau. Kelly? Thank you so much, Tim. Good afternoon, everyone, and I'm so glad to see you here today. My name is Kelly Cousineau, and I am the interim executive director of Oregon Mesa. For those new to our community, welcome. Oregon Mesa is a program of access and elevation hosted at Portland State University. Mesa was born out of the civil rights movement and based on the principle that expanding access to high quality STEM education for students of color is critical. This Black History Month, we want to acknowledge some of the Black leaders in Portland, such as our founding director, Renee Anderson, who paved the way for quality STEM education for Black children and youth in Portland. Thank you for building a strong foundation for MESA to stand on. The purpose of MESA has always been to support young people in their journey toward becoming leaders ready to tackle the problems of tomorrow. Over the past two years, we've seen racial injustices happen in real time as we were stuck at home dealing with a public health crisis. In Mesa, we are part of a local community that has been tragically affected by mass shootings that took place in Portland last week. We are also part of a global community and are here to show support for those suffering in Ukraine. We understand that the conflict between Ukraine and Russia has had a profound impact on our students and communities, some of whom are watching their homelands in crisis and worrying about the safety of family and friends. Now, more than ever, we need a generation of leaders who are committed to solving problems that are complex in our society. This is why Mesa is deepening our focus on equity in all parts of our organization. The next generation of leaders is in this room today and has been presenting all week. History has proven time and again that advancement in STEM breaks down barriers and creates a more accessible world for us all. This is why we at Mesa believe that the smallest change can create a ripple effect. Students should feel empowered to be change makers and that is our hope for Mesa. I could say a lot about what our students do in Mesa, but I think it's best if you hear from them directly. Mesa, it's a STEM after school program. It inspires you to build, to solve problems for people. It's like an opportunity to understand like the engineering field. Like I never had that opportunity anywhere else. We're all in here because we want to do this and we want to build things. It gets really tough sometimes and you just want to give up and when like you something just clicks in your head, it's like it feels amazing. Mesa was a safe space for me. 
to to be creative and and encouraged me to you know fulfill a path that isn't necessarily something that existed already. At first, it was more dudes than us, but now it's just like we're we're stepping up. We're showing. She up. was the only girl. I was the only. And then I keep it. <laughs> I mean, you learned a lot of stuff in Mesa. I didn't even know how to like do all that stuff to the arm. They honestly just make it, they help me grow because some of the stuff, even though that I wasn't interested at first, but they make it seem like, how can you make it in life if you're not willing to try new things that life offers? We are trying to push this back so the street can go up here and it can close even easier because... So you want to go up here? Yeah. One of our tasks is going to be picking up random objects, going to one table, coming back and taking up another object. And water bottles and turn it into a patentable product that can be used by the growing 3D printing industry. We were the only high school team competing against colleges, and I don't know, it was just really amazing. I didn't realize how special it was until we got the $20,000. Still can't believe it. Over 900 hours, I think I spent on this project. Getting the recognition of my peers and the support from the community is just worth it. Our teacher and the adults that have helped us have been really great support. We wouldn't come this far without them. I didn't know how much college was gonna cost, how I was gonna pay for it. Um, but I just, I wasn't, that was kind of the extent of what I believed that, that I could achieve and, and what, what I was expecting. And um, um, Renee at Mesa, I, when I joined Mesa, she saw a lot more than I did. <laughs> there was all the stuff that I wanted to do musically that maybe I didn't have the skill to play or the uh, money to get into a big studio. So the workaround was to use technology that was cheap so I would buy like an Atari computer that was you know few hundred three hundred dollars or four hundred dollars versus you know some ten thousand dollars in a big studio but because of that I got into computer music early and music production early uh, I chose USC because it was in LA and that's where the music business was and I didn't really think that I was gonna be a professional musician or anything, but I just, you know, I wanted to be close to the music business. I thought it was cool as a possibility. And and they had, a, USD had a recording engineering program. During the past week, students in Multnomah, Washington, Clackamas, and Marion counties showcased and pitched their projects in their classroom, connecting with each other on a virtual platform called GatherTown. 
our students in Klamath Falls were able to gather for an in-person event hosted by our regional partners at Oregon Tech. Today, we are here to celebrate our students' ideas, accomplishments, and commitment to this year's theme, Harvest to Table. Food is so important to our identity, our culture, and our connection to each other, but our current system does not provide equal access and control over food for everyone. This issue especially impacts BIPOC and low-income families, but there are a lot of people and organizations working really hard to make food systems better for everyone. Mesa students have been interviewing clients in their communities who work to improve these systems, such as farm workers, farmers, manufacturers, community organizers. And today, some of our students will share their ideas and inventions designed for their clients. To our Mesa students, thank you for being brave enough to put your ideas this week and receive feedback from family members, from STEM professionals, your teachers, and Mesa staff. We know this has not been an easy journey and we are here to help you succeed. I also want to thank our incredible MACE advisors who have worked really hard to inspire students this year. Without you, Mesa would not be possible. Please join me in thanking your Mesa advisor in the chat. I also wanna acknowledge our families, volunteers, and visionary sponsors who make Mesa possible. The Lemelson Foundation, Meyer Memorial Trust, the Collins Foundation, and Portland Children's Levy. And finally, I'd like to thank our staff and regional center partners who worked very hard to organize this event. Thank you for helping Mesa grow throughout Oregon. Students, we are so proud of all your work and we can't wait to see the incredible things the future has in store for you. Once again, thank you all for being here. Thank you, Kelly. And now it's time for our amazing keynote speaker. I'm honored to introduce Hazel Valdez. Hazel is the Associate Director of the Oregon Bioscience Incubator. She is responsible for recruiting new OBI client companies, attracting venture capital and angel investors, conducting outreach to leverage strategic partnerships with corporate and other partners to diversify funding for OBI and leading overarching strategies while promoting OBI's vision. Hazel brings a unique professional background of project management, marketing, technology, government, and nonprofit experience. She received a bachelor's degree from Lake Cordon Bleu in culinary management and a bachelor's degree from UC Irvine in English. She's currently a USA boxing official and is part of the Oregon State Athletic Commission as an inspector. We are so lucky to have her here today. Hello everyone, my name is Hazel Valdez. Thank you so much Mesa for having me as your keynote speaker today. I really am appreciative and honored that you'd have me here today. As I said, my name is Hazel Valdez and I am the Associate Director for the Oregon Bioscience Incubator. A little about me, I was born in a seaside town in the Philippines and came to the United States when I was five and a half years old. I have an older sister and two younger brothers and we grew up in Long Beach, California. My parents were both accountants, now retired, and needless to say, we grew up in a very strict Catholic household. I studied English at the University of California, Irvine. I have a BA in culinary man management from Le Cordon Bleu, 
and I also have my credentials as a classically trained chef. I'm also a marketer, project manager, and a board member of Saturday Academy as their board secretary. And I'm an official for USA Boxing. I love boxing. So I'm currently also trying to get my credentials as a referee for USA Boxing and my pro credentials as a official for the Oregon State Athletic Commission, so for the state of Oregon. Here's a fun picture of me um, with a 300 pound block of ice uh, in culinary school. This was one of our last activities. It was a lot of fun. They gave us a chainsaw and a block of ice and gave us an assignment and mine was the swan. So there it is. Today's theme of harvest to table is really a great analogy of how your future can transform you as you harvest the information and education you want to pursue in the field of science, engineering, technology, and or mathematics. As a professional whose path to science and technology came by way of marketing and healthcare positions, it really has been an adventurous learning experience for me. In culinary terms, harvest to table means knowing where our food sources come from, and then taking that say piece of vegetable or piece of protein and turning it into something good to eat. So let's take honey, for example. Honey starts as a nectar from a flower that's collected by bees. The bees break it down into simple sugars stored inside a honeycomb. A beekeeper harvests that honeycomb and extracts the honey. The honeycomb is then turned into a wax that's used for polish for wood and leather, making candles, an ingredient for makeup, and so on and so forth. The honey itself is harvested and used as food. It's also used as a natural healing agent and is part of ingredients in coughs and colds, medications, acne treatment, and infused with other herbs, as well as skincare treatment. The point is that at the moment of harvest, the properties of honey have multiple uses, and that's what I would love for you to do. Explore the possibilities in a STEM career. Let's use me as an example. I studied English at UC Irvine, have a BA from um, Le Cordon Bleu, and I took those skills and really started using the English part in marketing roles, and then quickly pivoted using my marketing skills into social media roles. So for all you folks out there who like to TikTok, Insta, um, and or Facebook still, you have to remember that social media has technology applied behind it. And wouldn't it be cool if one of you out there created some kind of app like Yelp that solely dedicated itself on promoting restaurants dedicated to folks with allergies and sensitivities of food. That's food technology. Now, when I use my culinary degree, I used it to work for the state of Arizona as um, the first state demonstration chef in the WIC program or the Women, Infants, and Children's program. I was also a chef um, for three restaurants and a general manager for two. Um, but I took those skills and applied what I knew of technology by way of social media. That's again, using technology. Today, as an associate director for the Oregon Bioscience Incubator, I work with scientists and researchers who are also entrepreneurs and I use my marketing, project management, and tech background and blend it with their expertise in math and science to contribute to Oregon's bioscience community. 
that's innovation. Along the way, I've had a lot of wins and I've also had opportunities for growth. I encourage all of you to really talk to your parents and talk to yourself about what you really want to do and explore those STEM disciplines that really interest you. I love food, but I love learning also. I harvested my knowledge in one area to create a career in another area. And although sometimes a science experiment might call for a certain protocol, it could also have a happy accident, like the accident that created antibiotics, or in engineering with the accident and the creation of Teflon. You never know what could happen. I also encourage all of you to create your own personal board of directors, people who will lift you up and support your endeavors, as well as people who will be Imagineers with you. Harvest the knowledge to become what you imagine in your mind. Question ideas that lead to more than one solution and create innovation. And lastly, be your authentic self. My call to you today, as you continue your passion in STEM career paths, is to be open to ideas and to trust that the information you harvested will be presented at the table with confidence. Knowledge and learning is continuous. Don't stop being curious. If anything, always be curious. Thank you. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you so much, Hazel, for delivering that keynote. We really appreciate all the inspiring words uh, you've shared with MESA students. Now, before we hear student pitches from a middle and high school students who volunteered to present their projects, we wanna take a moment to celebrate the winners of yesterday's Demo Day competition at Klamath Falls. Here you can see some pictures of the event. We wanna congratulate Chico and comp uh, company for winning first place in our middle school division. And congratulations to Team Cookie Monster and Team Moo for winning bo uh, both first places in our per, uh, high school division for the Klamath Falls region. Everybody put in the chat a quick congratulations for the winning teams. We hope to host the event in person for our other regions as well in the next year. Now time has come to watch our student pitches. Today, we will be hearing live from Team Fudge Strip Mini from Mazama High School and watch a recorded pitch from Team Masterminds from McDaniels High School. Audience members, please refrain from using the chat while students are presenting live to avoid distractions. Now let us get started. Team Fudge Strip Mini, when you're ready, you may begin. We will give you clues in the chat to let you know when three, four, and five minutes have passed during your presentation. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, unfortunately, the rest of my team couldn't be here, but I am representing Team uh, Strike Mini. Let's just say I got hungry and that's what the uh, team name turned out to be. So let's get this started. Um, go ahead and share my screen. All right, hi everybody. So this is, uh, our presentation, again, hi, I'm Liz Estes. I am a junior at Mazama High School. Uh, pictured here, uh, starting from uh, left to right, that's Thacker Moreland, also a junior. Kaylee Reedike, also a junior. And James Donahue, who is uh, a uh, sophomore at Mazama High School. So just a quick you know, review of what the challenge is. Uh, harvest a table, so students are assigned to a client involved in uh, the process of bringing food to our communities. Uh, our particular producer uh, brings beef to our communities. He is a beef producer. His name is Mark Estes. 
and uh, he works in McDowell, California on Prather Ranch. Uh, you know, one of our qualifications was that we had to incorporate a micro bit in our uh, prototype and design. Uh, we have, you know, of course, a four student team. Some constraints we ran into, we have, you know, limitations on money, materials, and size. We want to make this as cheap and efficient as possible. Uh, but as for available resources, we do have a 3D printer and access to client at all times. Uh, we have access to the dewormer to do some testing on, which is what the uh, project will be here in a second. And we have access to the facilities that this uh, project will eventually be used on. So our real client, our real client's name is of course Mark Estes. He's a ma ranch manager on Prather Ranch of McDowell, California. His big problem was dewormer waste and application because it's both a waste of uh, money from missing cattle during application and doesn't allow for the cattle to receive the appropriate amount of wormer because we are overdosing. Uh, therefore, they need a way to reduce the unnecessary dewormer and waste uh, that also you know, costs a lot of money uh, during the entire process. So what we have issues in, we of course have issues in uh, accuracy and uh, application and doses amount. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, waste of product is a big de deal. It needs to be adjustable for both size and weight, uh, as well as administration amounts. It needs to be sturdy because of the facilities you'll see here in a second. Uh, it, it, you know, cattle are going to be going through it and it's going to get rough so at sometimes. Uh, input method is a big, big portion of our uh, of our project because we do need to figure out how we're going to uh, incorporate all of this storage. Uh, the client is constantly having to repo containers. Uh, you know, they're only coming in about a five gallon uh, container. So it takes a lot of time to uh, move and refill all of these. So, you know, so solutions, we have a nozzle, uh, multiple adjustable hoses or tubes, preferably rubber. Uh, you know, it needs to be size and weight adjustable. It needs metal reinforcements for stability because it is going to get rough. Um, it needs to have a digital display or a possible keypad to input weights or read weights. Uh, communication between scale and applicator is going to be a big, big problem for us and uh, a water tank for storage. So here are some of the pictures. Uh, I'm going to go through these real quick because this will be important for the designs later. Um, as you can see here, we are working with a size constraint on the side. Uh, the mechanism will have to go here. It's going to be uh, mounted on this sturdy piece of metal here. It's actually bolted into the ground. And so we figured that that was going to be one of the safest places to put it. This is called a, sh a squeeze chute. What it does is that it has a head catch here that catches the cattle and we uh, take numbers and vaccinate in the, uh, in the squeeze chute. Uh, you can see the product that we're using here, and uh, if you squint really closely, um, <laughs> you can see the gun application that's used. Those jugs are hung upside down, and then it's applied uh, to the cattle. Uh, dewormers are actually, this is considered a pour-on, so basically what it does is that you dump it onto the cattle, and it gets absorbed through the skin, and so it's not an injectable like some other vaccinations, and instead has its own uh, set of problems. Uh, visual, uh, visualization and design process, uh, you know, it, it actually went pretty smoothly. We, uh, of course, utilize in some engineering designs and techniques, the whole process. Uh, we are still in the, you know, design and prototype process. We're trying to keep our mind open and kicking around a lot of ideas. Uh, we haven't conducted any tests because we are open to so many things. Uh, we want to further design prototype two because that is going to be uh, the best for, or what we would consider to be the best for the client. And we want to, of course, always redesign and reevaluate for the uh, producer. So design solution one is fairly simple. We just want to auto adjust the dial on the back of the hose. Um, it, it basically is just automating the system we already have with the same amount of, you know, techniques and uh, uh, materials that we have. Um, this is probably uh, one of the lesser liked ones of the group, um, it's simply just to automate the uh, uh, gun itself and will probably, oops, uh, probably not be utilized in the final design. This is, of course, the current doser. We got a little bit better picture of it. 
So Design Solution 2 is actually probably going to be the best prototype. Uh, as you can see here, here's the chute along here and the cage or uh, uh, alleyway lead up right here. The tank would be mounted here, as you can kind of see in this picture. Uh, it would you know, be a large metal tank that would hold uh, all the necessary liquid above the animal. Uh, it would pump the uh, pump to control, use a pump to control the amount of dewormer that gets moved to the animal through some uh, rubber tubing that goes through here. Um, the fuel line uh, type tubing would, would need to withstand dewormer transport uh, and the liquid to the animal for distribution. Everything also needs to be kept under a certain uh, temperature because uh, if it gets too hot, it could, it, it, it's very flammable because it is an alcohol. Um, and uh, we would utilize the micro bit as a either uh, to uh, as a keypad or as a button so that the producer could just hit the button and have it automatically dose. Uh, solution design three. Hey, is Liz, actually... I can take the next one. Oh, there you are. Okay. All right. So um, for design solution number three, um, so. Uh, if you could go back to that um, model, we can see that we have a, a squeeze chute. Um, and the idea would be to move, put a large metal tank above that, um, and then just put a valve on the bottom of this tank, and then use the micro bit to open and close this valve. Um, and so we could accurately uh, dose the animals. Um, and that, that was just kind of the thought for design solution too. Obviously, we'd use the uh, microcontroller to um, open and close the valve, uh, and then as an input to control an input method to the microcontroller, so we could um, input the weight of the animal, so we could accurately dose. All right. Um, so here for the microcontrollers, uh, I think we did a pretty good job um, describing uh, what we want to use the microcontrollers for in each one. But uh, just you know, as a quick recap, you know, just controlling stuff like the motors. Um, input methods, whether it's uh, digital displays or um, keypads. And yeah, that's what we're planning on using the microcontrollers for. Um, so coding. <laughs> so we, uh, we're all kind of mechanically inclined. Um, we don't have much experience coding. Um, and so we're still trying to learn the coding a little bit. Uh, we've we've kind of messed around with it, um, but we've mainly been focusing on you know, kind of brainstorming and how we want to take our projects, um, then really trying to code them uh, and get good at using the microcontrollers. All right, so as far as innovation and impact, we actually couldn't find anything similar to our design, both in agriculture and out. You know, a lot of the stuff we're going to be using uh, is fairly simple and fairly practical. Our client was going to be able to save time and money, however, require a lot less help, which is a big uh, important aspect of agriculture right now due to lack of workers. It's going to save a lot of money. Uh, you're going to have to re, you know, readjust less often. It's going to adjust it automatically for you. It's going to save a lot of product and it's going to uh, prevent, you know, diseases and illnesses that couldn't otherwise be because of an inaccurate dose. Um, it's going to accurately administer by weight. It's going to help a lot of other producers as well. And overall, it's going to uh, help the cattle out between, you know, being faster and reducing stress on the animal and, uh, actually treating the animal properly. <sighs> Moving forward. So of course we need to work on our models and of course we need to you know, code and actually choose a proper model. We need to uh, incorporate the microcontroller and educate ourselves on the coding for the microcontroller. I don't know, was there anything else we needed to work on? Okay. So that is actually it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, now would be a great time. Um, go ahead and actually, I'm gonna stop share just cause then I can come back here. And chat. So Team Fudge uh, Mini from uh, Mazama High School, thank you so much for sharing what you've done so far on your project. And now let's watch another student presentation from the McDaniels team masterminds.
We are the McDaniel Masterminds, and we represent McDaniel High School. I am Charles Linwood. I'm Ian Latta. I am Lucas Davidson. I am Oliver Cross. Our challenge, uh, as set up by Mesa slash the NEDC, uh, was we needed to design something that fit the criteria of farm to table, which basically means we have to design something to assist in the production, transportation, or storage of food products. The requirements for this challenge are that we must use a microprocessor and it must fall under the previously specified category. Some personal constraints that our group had was that our members only know a limited amount of coding languages, including C++, Python, and Java, and our team budget is only $15 per unit manufactured. Um, our client is Chris Walters. He is the head of nutrition services at McDaniel High School and prepares the meals for hundreds of students every day. Our client's primary problem is that he was unable to easily track the temperature of his fridges and freezers while he wasn't at school. The fridge or freezer malfunctioned while he was away. Uh, he risked ruining all the food inside and being unable to serve to them. Uh, the device. This is our device. The primary components we used were a resistors, temperature sensor, and an Arduino Uno. Uh, we also use a variety of other basic things, such as wires. For the microcontroller, we used an Arduino Uno. This is the core part of our device, and without it, we, it wouldn't be possible. Since we are working with Arduino Uno, our code has been written in C++. We started by taking code from the Arduino website, which enabled us to use the temperature sensor. Then we further developed it to fix our exact needs by making it display Fahrenheit and streamlining efficiency. There are uh, other apps that exist which perform similar functions with mobile apps. However, devices that log temperatures into a spreadsheet do not exist to our knowledge. Uh, the design process. We are currently up to E and invent, experimenting. We have identified and interviewed our client, identified a problem, and are now in the process of, of designing and testing our innovation. Moving forward, our next steps are to get our device to upload temperature readings to a spreadsheet, as well as to add a button to take a temperature reading on command when pressed. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, to all of our students for presenting. We're proud of all the work that's been done so far. And we're uh, so glad our community got a chance to see your hard work. I want to take a moment to thank our volunteers for sharing their time to provide useful advice to our Mesa students and how to advance in their projects. Here's the list of all the amazing STEM coaches, judges, exhibitors, and event volunteers. We are so grateful for your help. Before we go to the end of the ceremony, I wanted to share our upcoming events and opportunities for Mesa students and families. We are recruiting students for the 2022 Invention Boot Camp. Invention Boot Camp is a four week invention engineering camp for high school students led by Dr. Jerry Rechtenwald at PSU. The camp will be July 5th to the 29th. Students must be currently enrolled in ninth through 12th grade and an Oregon resident to be eligible to participate. We are planning for an in-person camp this summer but may need to uh, pivot to a hybrid or virtual camp based on COVID developments. We encourage students of all levels of experience to apply. The application deadline is Sunday, March 6th. We are hosting Career Week during March 7th uh, through March 10th at 5 p.m. Each day, students will get the chance to explore different careers in the STEM fields through career presentations. 
hosted by industry professionals. The presentations feature speakers from PAE engineers, Intel, First Tech, and Daimler. You can sign up and register at the link in the chat. Mesa Talks are also happening next month. Mesa Talks are a series of virtual talks where we gather a panel of experts to discuss equity in reference to a STEM related topic. On March 31st, we'll be joined by the Oregon Women at Intel for our talk on women in STEM, breaking the bias. Audience members will be able to submit questions to our speakers during the live event. Register today. We're hosting a virtual Mesa Family Nights in March and April with activities from OMSI. Each night, Mesa families will get the chance to engage in STEM-based activities and learn more about the work Mesa is doing. The events will be in Spanish and English, and there will be two options to choose from for your students' age group. We will be raffling off prizes and offering food or gift certificates for those who attend. Pick the night that works best for your family. Our culminating event of the year, Mesa Day, is happening on May 20th. 2022. At Mesa Day, middle and high school students engage in hands-on competition, career exploration, and college preparation. While Mesa Days in 2020 and 2021 were virtual, we are preparing and excited for the uh, opportunity to bring our students back to the PSU campus in 2022 for a day of safe, engaging, and immersive competition and college career exposure. Adjustments for schools that can attend due to restrictions will be made. As part of our Mesa Day celebration, we will be honoring our students, teachers, and community members in our future innovators celebration on May 11th. The Future Innovators Celebration will be an opportunity for members in the community to support Oregon Mesa through giving. If you are interested in becoming a sponsor and help us reach more students throughout Oregon, you can check out our sponsorship package in the chat and be on the lookout for an official invite with the registration link coming next week. We also want to highlight the American Indian Science and Engineering Society Region 1 Conference. It's covering a uh, five-state region throughout the Pacific Northwest, and it will be held on April 15th to the 17th at Portland State University. At the conference, professional members will participate as members, mentors, and speakers sharing expertise, facilitating discussion in areas of engineering, environmental science, health careers, and other areas of STEM. I'm serving personally as the uh, chair of the organizing committee. Please feel free to register in the link provided in the chat for those that are interested in the uh, American Indian Science and Engineering Society. It's open to high school students 
college students, and industry professionals. Normally, for the final part of our event, we give out competition awards. Since many schools faced closures that disrupted chapter meetings and created obstacles for our students to continue working together on their projects, we decided to keep Demo Day equitable. So we will not be giving out competition awards. Our advisors will be giving special awards to students in their upcoming chapter meetings. These awards will be the Annie Easley Award, awarded to those that adapt and evolve to situations they encounter. The Lonnie Johnson Award, for reminding us that fun is a great inspiration for invention. The Aaron Yazzie Award, for those promoting inclusion and excitement in the chapter. The Mary G. Ross Award, for their persistence in reaching for the stars. The Inez, uh, Mexica uh, Award for hitting the ground running and never stopping. The Jose M. Hernandez Award for overcoming obstacles and having a persistent drive. And lastly, the 110% Award awarded to a student who always went above and beyond in the chapter. Now, students, listen up to celebrate all of you being here today and for participating in this year's Demo Day, we decided to give you the opportunity to participate in a raffle. You can get the chance to win a 3D pen to draw in midair, allowing you to instantly form 3D structures right in front of you, which you can pick up and hold in your hand, or a Spiros, a very cool programming robot and STEM-based educational tool that'll transform the way you learn, create, and invent through coding, science, music, and the arts. You can use Spiro uh, robots to play games, create programs, or create uh, complete challenges. All you have to do is fill out the form in the chat and submit. Your teachers will announce the winners and you'll receive your prize directly in the mail. Thank you so much, Tim. That marks the end of our event. Thank you all again for joining us this Saturday. We hope that you were as inspired as I was today. You can find more information for, about the links we shared on the Demo Day page of Mesa Every Day. The link is in the chat. Please complete our event survey to let us know how it went and how we can improve. Thank you to all the students for taking the time to prepare your pitches. And thank you to all of our teachers and parents who have supported teachers. Thank you for the whole Mesa team for helping us pull off this virtual demo day. Further questions can be sent to us at ormesa at pdx.edu. We hope to see you all again soon. Thank you so much. Bye.